Okay, hello everybody. Welcome to the class. How are you tonight? I hope everything is going well. So we're going to start and as usual, we're going to check about the platform. This is the class of today and uh, this is the question for today. So we're going to check the attendance as usual. Let's see, Ada Susana Cáceres Mendoza. Ana Claudia González Velázquez. Good. Dani Josué García Martínez. Fernando Marvin González Martínez. Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejía. Heidi Eugenia Salguero de Rivas. Present teacher. Good. Ileana Giselle Cañas Escobar. Present teacher. Good. Irene Azucena Cuellar Álvarez. José Marcos Rodríguez Ayala. José Osmín Rivas Navas. José Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Sorry, teacher, present. Ok, good. Juan Miguel Brán Mejía. María Alejandra Barrientos Romero. Ramón Enrique Mata Escobar. Roberto Luis Umaña Orellana. Roxana Ivette Asensio de Mejía. Steven Vladimir Villacorta Rivera. Suleima Yvonne Moreno de Hernández. Perfect. Perfect, I got you. Okay, so we're going to start tonight and we're going to start actually with the book. So let me then just check here. Okay. So uh, let's review some things that we have checked. Suppose that unit three and four is for all generations, but tonight we're going to see something different. Just for us to refresh, do you remember what the baby boomers are? The ones born after the second war? I don't remember exactly the year. <laughs> Very good. So those are the baby boomers. Do you remember any characteristics from the baby boomers? Workaholics. <laughs> Workaholics. <laughs> and, and they um, love recognition. Okay, very good. So those are baby boomers. Mm -hmm. What about Gen X? Who are they? My mom and my dad. <laughs> okay, very good. And uh, any characteristics from the Gen X? Um, they try to 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 have a balance between a, a family and work. Very good, perfect. Very That's good. Mm -hmm. Okay. What about Gen Y? What oh do my you God, Ileana can be my daughter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, actually, I'm part of Gen X as well, so. Me <laughs> too. <laughs> okay, very good. What about Gen Y? Or millennials, right? Those are millennials, yeah. So Many any people. character? Tech savvy people. Okay, tech savvy people. What else? Okay, that's good. And bridge the gap. What do you understand on that one? Uh, identify the strengths and uh, for each generation and look for all the opportunities that or 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 the way that you can mix uh, other generations in the workplace something like that perfect so that is it so bridge the gap means that you need to work together with them take in a consideration their differences and also take an advantage uh, about what they are good for so very good so this is like a little review and uh, 
Uh, we know that already. So it says the generation gap at the workplace and says how to avoid run on sentences part one. Let's see. Um, Heidi, could you please help me reading this chart? Sure, teacher. Good. How to avoid run on sentences part one. Look at the examples in the box, then complete the exercise below. Use a comma before a coordinating conjunction, fun boys, that joins two independent clauses, examples. The gap generation put many employees at a disadvantage, but newer and experienced employees are supporting each other. When two independent clauses are put together without a comma plus a coordinating conjunction, the result is a run on sentence. Run on sentence, sentences cause our message to be difficult to read by our audience. Run on. I read the research about your generation gap. It is very interesting. Correction. I read, I read the research about your generation gap and it is very interesting. Very good. So that is it. It's kind of easy. I, I, like, well, if you put everything together and there are two independent ideas, even though when they are together, when they are related, uh, it's going to be difficult to be understood. So we need to use a coordinating conjunction. Fanboys, to be honest with you, I don't know why they use that one in the book, but that is going to join the two independent clauses. For example, the gap generation put many employees at a disadvantage, comma, but, newer and experienced employees are supporting each other. And the other one is also, it says when two independent classes are put together without a comma plus a coordinated conjunction, the result is a run on sentence. So that is a run on sentence. So it's a sentence that is all together. And since they are two ideas, sometimes you say like, I, I don't get what you're trying, trying to say, right? So for example, I read the research about the generation gap. It is very interesting to say, what? Um, could you please repeat? But if you say, I read the research about the generation gap, and it's, it is very interesting. So that is better, right? So it's going to be much better with the comma and the pause, of course, and the conjunction that is going to be anything that might be good for depending on the situation. Okay. Do you have any question about this? No, Clear as or chat. Good. So it says identify the run ons on the following passage. Then use one of the coordinating conjunctions from the box and the appropriate punctuation to correct the sentence. Hint each coordinating conjunction is used once. Compare your answers with a classmate. And well, we have for and nor, but, or, yet, and so. And here is the paragraph that we're going to correct. So uh, let me see if we are able, I guess, uh, is that good for you? Are you able to read the whole thing and the, and the conjunctions? Yes, we can see it on the screen completely. Very well. So I will it's give you- one and ending in coaching, right? Uh, I'm sorry? Is it starting in one and ending in the word coaching? Yeah, and are you um, able to read before that one for and or but all the conjunctions, right? If you just scroll down a little. Well, I, what I can do is this. This is what I can do. So is it better for you like oh, this? It's better. Okay, perfect. So. I'm going to give you a few minutes for you to check and then tell me where it's going to be either one or the other and uh, if you are going to use commas or anything like that, so. Why the most common management challenges involve how to effectively manage all kinds of different people? Some managers and employees in general don't like the behavior of younger generations.
Okay, have you finished or do you need a few more minutes? Okay, so let's check. Okay, so who wants to start? Anybody? I don't know, I'm going to try with the first. For me, it's one of the most common management challenges involves how to effectively manage all kinds of different people. Uh, some managers and employees in general don't like the behavior of younger generation leaders, comma. So must learn to promote a good environment among their employees. I think that the saw could be there. I'm not truly tr tr sure, but I... <laughs> Okay, very good. So yeah, it might be there. Yeah, so is something that we can we can use in that one. Let me let me check. Some managers and employees in general don't like the behavior of younger generations. Leaders must learn. I guess it's there. Ah, okay. Generation but, comma. Comma, and then you can use so so leader. So leaders. Ah, okay. Must learn to promote a good a good environment among their employees. Ah, okay. Well, Sounds Everybody good. agree? <laughs> okay. Sounds yeah, the thing here is to check that is logical, right? That you're mm -hmm. going to include that one in a, in a way that everything is with a good pace. Mm -hmm. Okay. Who wants to continue? Anybody? This one, there are many ways for you to, to do it. So you can provide your opinion and that is fine. Nobody. It's kind of easy. For example, we say Robert Half explored the greatest difference among company employees. There we can use another one, comma. And who are from different generations? Something like that is, is good. So as you see, it's just a matter for you to include them whenever it is, is better. So if, for you to understand in a better way what we're reading. Okay, who wants to do the next one? Maybe Generation Z and I don't have the same views about change their millennial con counterpart, con counterpart. Okay. Uh, and Generation Y often view changes more favorably, change result in opportunity. Mm. So when you were reading, you you find it right. So when you say yeah. generation Y, often you change more probably change for certain opportunity. That is not good. Or maybe after uh, generation Y is comma and after sorry before 
before generation Y, a comma, and uh, yeah, and, and finally, before, I don't know, maybe I, I maybe I will add and before generation, no, yeah, before gener the generation Y and generation C and the end. I'm not sure. Okay, the change there it has to be actually before the word change. So generation Y often you change more favorably. There we need something. Okay. Um... Well, uh, I change generation C for uh, so is a customer to change. Is it only natural for them to expect it? Okay, so let's start with the first one. We can say maybe something like that. Generation Y often be changed more heavily, comma yet change results in opportunity. That is the correct one for that one. So for everybody to get it that one. So if you read that one in that way, you will see that has more sense, right? Generation Y, often view change more favorably, comma. Yet mm -hmm. change results in opportunity, okay? And then the other one you were saying is Gen Z is accustomed to change. There we need, we need something, right? Change. Gen Z is accustomed to change comma and we can use another one let me see james because of change it is only natural for them to expect it and we can use four uh-huh for it is only natural for them no because with there is another four there so it's not possible so it should it be is. something oh, gen z is. is the change comma uh so it is we can use so, but we used that before, so we need to change that again, right? Um, or not, but we can use but as well. But it, uh, it is only natural to, for them to expect. No, but it's not good as well. So it's better here, actually. Yeah, so it's better here. So it is only natural for them to expect. It. Yeah. So you see the pauses. Maybe the most important is where we need to do the pause, right? For example, in these two things, for example, uh, the first, this last, the latest two that we have done, generation Y often view change more favorably. There we need a pause. Mm -hmm. And then we can interchange. We can use one or a other a conjunction. So that is not, I mean, maybe the important thing is that if it's going to be the same idea, we can use and, for example, if it's different, you are going to use but, or not if it's different and or if it's, either or, right? So those are it. And uh, at the end, I mean, the pause is the most important. We need to, to be able to understand where the pause has to be done. And the second one, actually, Gen Z is accustomed to change. And there, of course, we need a pause. If we read that together, if we read Gen Z is accustomed to change, it is only natural for them to expect it. It doesn't feel good. It's not good. But if we make the pause, Gen Z is accustomed to change. It is only natural for them to expect it. So we only need to add the comma and one word that is going to make that sense, that put together the two ideas to make the clause. So that is the most important here, to identify where the pause must be, where the separation of the two ideas must be. So the other one says the research examined employee development related methods. It found that boomers and uh, it. Okay, so there in between methods and it, there has to be another pause. The research examined employee de uh, development related methods. It found that boomers in Gen X liked to learn via, uh, there is another, liked to learn via, no, that is together, the traditional courses or self learning tools, many prefer. Millennials. In millennials, there is another pause. If you check that one, exactly here in millennials, there is another pause. Then we just need to identify what is there. Preposition that is better, but as I was telling you, sometimes we can use one or the other one. But the pause is the most important. So between millennials and preferred, there is another. 
quality preference and vehicles. Exactly what would be expected given the current relationship with technology? There, there in technology, we need another pause. The value placed on personal account. So that is the most important, where the pause must be. Maybe this exercise is kind of confusing, but whenever you are writing, I believe that you do it in a very good way. The problem is that, you know, in English, when, whenever we are learning English as a second language, one of the latest topics that they teach is about writing, punctuation, and things like that. But that is because they and the US to write or uh, it's very important that is with a logical thing, not to repeat words, to use rich vocabulary, meaning that you are not going to repeat one or another word many times that in the in the paragraph or in the whole thing that you are writing. And that, that is why, I mean, uh, if we were studying English like very, very hard, uh, very, very like, um, how can I say that? For you to be totally bilingual, I mean, that you are not going to speak Spanish at all whenever you finish the classes. Uh, for example, one of the things that we need to do is to, to write essays. And essays, they have a structure. So if you, have a teacher, a professor, and provide, uh, you deliver a, an essay that is, maybe the ideas are good, but the punctuation is not just good. The essay is going to, is going to be flunked. It's, you're not going to pass the, the grade for that one. That's why this, one of, this is one of the latest topics. But in general, what we need to understand is that it has to be logical and then try to find the words that are going to be the, the correct ones. Not only the conjunctions, but in general, the words. That's why uh, in this uh, level, I've been reading a lot. So you can see the structure. So you can see that there are words that means the same that other words that are very common, but you can enrich the text by using those words, like nuance. You know that one already. Uh, boundaries, so we can say limits. There are limits that we need to be careful about. But then whenever you are writing a text, sometimes it's good for us to use different words instead of the most common words. So it sounds better. That is like the, the main idea for this one. Do you have any question about this? No. Okay. So as I was telling you, maybe the use of the uh, of this one of the conjunctions is not that important. I mean, we can use sometimes and and or we can use nor uh, but so it's also very similar to jet in this kind of paragraphs. So that is not at the end very important. But where is the pause? Where we need to stop so the ideas are separated? That is the most important. You can do the exercise by writing it, or if you print the book, you can also do it. So you can identify in a better way those ones. And we're not gonna do this. Uh, we're not gonna do this yet. So we're going to see a video and then uh, we're going to, actually we're going to make an activity today that is kind of different, right? Because we've been speaking about generations a lot and the, the time has come to, to practice in a different way. So. This is a little video about interviews, job interviews. As usual, we're going to see the video, then you are going to provide opinions or comments about it, and then uh, we're going to move on with the topic for today. Imagine you just got a higher view video interview. You're not used to them, so you're a bit stressed, but you give it your best and start the interview. While doing the video interview, you feel good, you answer the questions rightfully, and you make sure you are clear in your explanations. You click on the submit button and you relax. I think it went well, you tell yourself. But a couple of days later, you receive an email saying you were not taken. And you don't understand why. You thought you nailed the interview, so what happened? In this video, I will show you five subtle mistakes to avoid in a video interview so that the situation I just explained never happens to you. I'm sure you don't want to miss an exciting opportunity at a job you really need simply because you weren't able to avoid these easy mistakes. So here's what you have to do. You probably want to jump right on your computer and start your video interview, but take a step back and avoid the first mistake many people make. Lack of preparation. 
You have to prepare for a video interview the same way you prepare for a real job interview. Higher view interviews are usually structured. You will have the same questions as all the other applicants in the same order. Think about that for a second. Imagine you're an HR professional watching over 50 videos of the same questions being asked in the same order. Who will you remember? The person with the most outstanding answers and gestures. To become that person, record yourself on a computer or your phone answering popular questions such as tell me about yourself. This will give you the opportunity to evaluate how you will look like in a video and see how you can give better answers as well as get more comfortable in front of a camera. You can evaluate your gesture, your enthusiasm, and the way you answer questions. Show it to trusted friends. They can give you valuable insight that you can't see yourself and then make appropriate changes. When you feel ready, you can go on your desk or whatever the place you choose to start your video interview. But make sure you avoid this second mistake, not controlling your surroundings. Avoid being this guy. I mean, look at that tie. Make sure the light doesn't change because of the sun and the clouds by closing your curtains. If you live with people, make sure you tell them your video and viewing so that they stop being loud and kick out your pets from your room so that they don't disturb your background. I know it's gonna be hard. Now you have yourself a winning set to film your video interview. But before starting, make sure the higher view app runs smoothly by avoiding the third and most popular mistake, the technology. If you're using your phone to film yourself, make sure you have the latest version of the higher view app. If you're using your computer, make sure you have the latest version of Adobe Flash. You should already have it if you decide to use Google Chrome. Next, check your internet connection using websites like speedtest.net. You should have a minimum of 2 megabytes per second for your download and upload if you want the best results. If you're below that, try moving closer to your router or simply ask people in your house to turn off their Wi-Fi for the duration of your interview. Oh, also, please make sure you plug your device. The last thing you want is your computer or phone turning off right in the middle of your interview, right? Perfect, you're prepped now. You are in control of your surroundings and you checked your tech. Now the moment you've been waiting for, open the higher view app to start the interview. But take it slow. Make sure you avoid this fourth mistake, not reading the instructions carefully. When you start the higher view app, you should have a setup page where it gives you fast facts about the process, as well as a quick tutorial. Make sure you read everything because they will give you important information about the timing, the different buttons, and more. Next. Please do the practice question they give you. Too many people think they're badass and skip it just to get over the interview. But do it. It will give you a short impression of what your video will look like so you can adjust maybe the light, the background, the audio, and also your body language. Awesome. Now that you're prepped, let's go start the interview. You'll have 30 seconds to think about the question they just showed you, and then you'll have up to three minutes to answer. If you're done answering before the time's up, you can simply click on the stop button. But that's where most candidates get it wrong. Avoid the last mistake, not knowing how to close your answer. Avoid saying things like, um, yeah, that's it. Or, um, and so, yeah, that's the end of my answer. Or simply stressing out and trying to find the stop recording button awkwardly. My favorite technique is relate your answer to the role, then refer back to the question. So let's say they ask you, what's your greatest strength? You could end by, so finally, my planning abilities would be my greatest strength and the strength that would be the most valuable here at this company for this role. You know what I mean? <sighs> You're now done with your higher view video interview where you were able to avoid those five popular mistakes. So hopefully it will help you get that job just after this interview. So if you're wondering what to do if you wanna better prepare for this higher view video interview, watch this video just here. And Okay, what did you get from this? First one, the most of the people are a lot of nervous before the different interviews, interviews. And maybe um, when, in general, when we have an interview, we can uh, practice, alone and take some videos with uh, our cell phone show to, my, to our uh, friends or relatives and 
get some advices about the physical expression maybe or may or uh, maybe you can get a um, better idea uh, to sh share the opinion or, or your answer in that case and you can support your uh, knowledge or your nervous with some apps to um, help to to uh, measure maybe measure measure, measure, yeah. maybe, mm -hmm. measure your time your answer times and try to uh, be clear with your ideas and and don't be like um i don't know how to say dudoso doubtful doubtful yeah that is oh. important don't use phrases that that is this is my answer or something like that yeah and the videos say that uh, when you will finish your uh, opinion maybe you can use uh, phrases such as and finally and at the end or something like that don't use um like amuletias i guess okay. very good very good very perfect good. go ahead uh -huh. no no that is okay so yes these are kind of tips i know that some of you you want to grow within your company or move to another company so today we're going to speak a little bit more about interview and how you can do a very good job on that one if that is in english of course so so that is uh, those were like some tips in case you do that one in a video recording or on a computer so very interesting any other opinion or any other comment about the video Like you said, teacher, uh, the I think that the that we saw in the video is in the video was a, like a very structured um, interview. But well, in my case, I want to share my experience. <laughs> uh, I remember that when I had my interview the, for the position that I have now, I was expecting the the like the common interview like. Okay, I saw your your I don't know how do you say your curriculum. Your resume. I think you the resume. And but no, my actual boss just was like, okay, mm, Iliana, right? And he was like, yeah, Iliana Canyons. Okay, tell me about you. And that was all. And I was like, I was uh, my I I I remember that that I prepared like like i don't know like for the common questions you know and the only question was tell me about you or not a question was more like uh, just tell me and i i remember that i felt very nervous because i wasn't prepared for just for that and but yeah was a, a very a very successful interview at the end because i i won the 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 the, the position yeah the, the contest about this this and yeah that was my experience very different uh if, if we compared uh, with the example in the video or the explanation in the video but yeah i just wanted to say that very good, perfect. Thank you for your experience. Yeah, and that happens sometimes. Well, we need to be ready, right? And but we don't know exactly what is going to happen. I mean, they, the people that are going to interview, they are the only ones who know. Sometimes they ask some crazy questions, like I don't know. Tell me one time that you did something wrong in your life, and then you have to come with something, right? Of course, you can say I don't do anything wrong um and uh nervous is always there i mean that is going to happen all the time at any interview that you go even if you know the people that are going to interview i mean that is going to be for sure people are going to be nervous and you are going to be nervous so that is something that we need to handle right so very good any other 
comments about the video or opinion or anything like that? Mm, I think that these type of interviews are so special. Um, I haven't uh, I haven't had the, the that experience like uh, fighting or getting a job through a, a video interview, but I guess should be I will be so nervous because the preparation you must um, get or have before uh, recording the video is a lot. I guess it's the 80% of before making the video. Just making the video could be the 20 or the 10%. And one of the things that uh, I was looking at very important is to make like a pre-record of your answers or your interview and share with other. So it's a kind like a kind of uh, preparing to make a or being like uh, being on television, <laughs> that you must uh, uh, show your best. And that I was thinking on that that must be so difficult to 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 be on a, a video interview. And, and the other thing that it took my attention is the last part like Roxana mentioned that we need to attach the answer to the role questions that our um, uh, our I our oh, how can I say this our um, uh, strong must be attached with the role and with the question and not to be like da diving or using words like and mm, or, or or showing nervous trying to find the stop button <laughs> to stop the the recording but yeah very very interesting that video with all the guidance or step perfect thank you so mm -hmm. yeah that happens sometimes i mean there are many ways of interviewing people. The most common is come and we want to meet you because people, they are really interested to get to know you, to check how they, they feel actually when you are talking with them, if you are able to work with them, to answer all the questions. Some interviews are very extensive. Some mm -hmm. interviews are very basic and we need to be ready for that one, right? So. And the famous question that everybody does, uh, tell me about you. <laughs> Actually, we're going to see a video about that one. So it's uh, very oh, yeah. interesting. And uh, I'm telling you right now that you are going to do an interview today. So that is going to be interesting. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so yeah, that's why we're going to do this a little, this little practice. I know that some of you, I mean, this is English for work. And some of you, maybe in the closed future, you will be able to go to an interview. And if it's in English, you will be able to, to pass it, right? So that's what I want. Okay, and there are many kinds of interviews. For example, I, let me tell you about an experience about the weirdest, or I don't know, no weirdest, but the technique of the interview that they made that time. We were a bunch of people, a lot of people. And they, we were sitting outside in the ale, in the corridor, and there were music. Uh, there was music playing there uh, a little bit. And everybody, some of the people that were speaking, they were telling, hey, where do you come from? Uh, are you working right now? Or things like that, all right. But then suddenly in the music and one of the songs, a woman started saying, if you think that you are ready for this position, singing, you know, she was singing. If you think that you're ready for this position, just cross the door. So we only three people, we did that one. We were able to listen and cross the door. And the rest of the people, they were dismissed. They say, you can go home. That wow, was- active listening. <laughs> yeah, active listening. That happens sometimes. So mm. That is, I, I mean, the companies, they use different techniques right, mm -hmm. for, for them to, to see if you are paying attention, if you are really getting to, to the job that you are going to get. I mean, they do that one sometimes. My God. Sometimes they do some tests as well, right? Sit down on the computer and do this, right? So that is also very common. 
And sometimes you are not ready for that one. I mean, you believe that it's going to be only the interview. But no, sometimes they say, okay, so sit down and show me, show me how you do this. And then it's like, oh my goodness, let's do it, right? So <laughs> that happens. So today we're gonna to speak a little bit more about interview and how to handle that one. So it says the time has come after creating a clear resume. And this is the word, um, Giselle. Resume and cover letter in the US, you need to uh, present a cover letter and pass in the first round, maybe the test or something like that. It is time to face the final challenge, your job interview. And that scares even to the best of us. So that's what we say, right? We are going to be nervous. It doesn't matter if you are the best candidate and you know a lot of things, you are going to be nervous. So being judged and evaluated by people who have your future in their hands is more anxiety inducing than meeting the in-laws. <laughs> yeah, that is true. True. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, because when you are going to meet your in-laws, you are going to be there with your couple. She says, right? Or, well, in my case, she, but if it's a, another person like he, it's fine. Um, be prepared. My dad is like this. My mom is like this. My brother. So mm -hmm. you are ready. But here, you don't know what to expect. You know, right? one of the most strange uh, questions uh, that someone made in an interview when I was... Uh, switching to the, this account that I'm now is it was explain me how you tie your shoelaces. Shoelaces is right. And At I your... was uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> My God, that was the the worst <laughs> question I had asked. I don't know how, but I explained it then. Yeah, I mean you you need to be ready to answer, right? And that is it. So the problem is that we don't know the questions that they're going to ask, and that makes us nervous. Mm -hmm. Who is going to do the interview? What kind of interview is going to be? How many questions are going to ask? And of course, are we going to be able to answer them properly so I can get the job? So of course, you are going to be nervous. Mm -hmm. And then it says, you've heard the interviewers and hire managers say that there are no right or wrong answers to calm you down before an interview. That happens, right? They say you there is no good, no bad answers. And then when you start talking, they start typing, right? And you say, oh my goodness, here we go, right? <laughs> Teacher. Yep. There is, there is it's a question in an interview that I think that is a break point. Okay. That is, uh, which are your weaknesses? Oh, that is a tough one. Yeah, that question is very difficult because sometimes you don't know how to respond, how to answer that. And because you you need to be honest, but you cannot say sometimes I'm lazy or sometimes I am impunctual. You need to... <laughs> Yeah, you need to they see you good, but I'm a liar. <laughs> yeah, in my time, I'm a liar. I never say the uh, truth. Uh. Yeah, it's, it's a difficult question every every interview. Yeah, that is actually one of the most difficult questions. As you said, I mean, we cannot say things that are going to affect the opinion of the interviewer so they can choose you. But you need to say actually something, right? Something that Maybe it's not good for you or it's difficult for you. I mean, that is it. What I learned about that one is that you can say something. I mean, you can actually say anything, but at the end of the answer, you have to say, how did you overcome or what you are doing to improve that one? So. Uh, English is a very option. Yeah. Because so, you can say, yeah. And in my case, for example, I engineer, but. Uh, at this time, I I need to be able to speak English, and I don't know, but I am working on that. Okay, yeah, that is it, right? So there are many questions. We are going to check uh, many of those here. Then we're going to watch the video, and I hope we have the time to, to do the interview. So, and it says, but there's here's the thing. They are almost always looking for a specific way of answering. So as Fernando say, I mean, they ask that question and we cannot fail. We can say, 
anything, but if we say something that is not good for the interviewer, for you to get the job, of course, you, you're going to fail only with that question. I mean, maybe you made very good the other questions, but if that one was not good, they are going to say, oh, but he said this, you know, so. And it says, which bring us to this guide, we're going to cover the most common interview questions and answers, turning you into a bona fide interview expert by the time you're doing reading. So let's get started. And uh, well, let me just go until the ones. Okay, so these are like the 14 most common interview questions. And this is the first one, definitely. But let me just read you the introduction. Uh, these questions are the ones you're bound to hear at just about any job interview, whether you're an intern or a senior professional with a decade at work experience. All of these questions are used to learn more about you, both as a person and a professional. You might have heard the popular idea that there's no right or wrong answers for job interview questions. Well, while that might be true, there are a set of rules you need to follow when answering these questions. If you understand what exactly the interviewer is looking for with each question, you'll be able to give the right answer and wrap that interview. So that's what we're gonna do right now. We're going to check some questions that are like the most common and what are some tips for, for us to go through them, right? So. The first one is going to be for Giselle. Okay, teacher. Sorry. Oh, you're mm -hmm. reading. Uh, don't worry. Yeah. Are you able to? Mm -hmm. Or do yes. you want to do it later? <laughs> no. It's okay. okay. Enjoy okay. your food anyway. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, number one. Tell me something about yourself. How hard? Can it be to talk about yourself? We do it on a daily basis without much, without much thought to it. However, recruitment managers are not looking for your whole life story, your third grade achievements, or what you had for dinner last night. Instead, there are, they are looking for a pitch. This is usually the first question asked in an interview. So it asks it acts as your introduction. Make sure your answer is relevant to the position you are applying for. What you should be aiming for here is to present yourself as the ideal candidate for the job. Continue? Yes, please. Okay. A good rule of thumb is to structure your talking points as follows. Briefly introduce yourself. What's your name? How long have you been working as a profession? What do you love about your job? What are your, what are your top three achievements that are relevant to the job you're applying for? Okay. Now let's go through some examples. Okay. Only that, only that. So what did you get from this? That I remember again, my, my, my interview. <laughs> Actually it was just like this. Tell me about yourself. And I freeze because I wasn't prepared for this question. But um, I understand that that the, um, the rec recruitment manager or, or who, who are interviewing you are looking for like your strengths and your like the most important about yourself, like the father of Seth, not, not your, your life story. So you must need to be prepared with all that strengths that you have and that maybe could result interested for the, for the recruitment manager. And, 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 and tell uh, how that strength uh, can be uh, okay, result very important or or like I don't know how to say it. Relevant. Like like, uh huh, yeah yeah. And how you uh, how you can relate these strengths with the position that you are yeah. applying. 
Very good. So that is so true. I mean, yes, it's an introduction that you do, but it's important that from the very beginning you start selling yourself, right? The interviews are for that, for you to expose about yourself, but you are able to tell about yourself. So the interview says, this person is the best one, right? So definitely. And it's very important to, to think about the position you are applying uh, to. So you can also, from the very beginning, introduce that one. I'm good at this, you know? I, I'm going to be very valuable for the company or for the position because of this. So that is, this is very important. Good, good. So there are some examples. Let's check the number one. Ana Claudia, could you please help me with this? Of course. Uh, the sample answer one, right? Yeah, please. Uh, hey, so my name is John Doe and I work as a business analyst. Anal analyst? Analyst. Analyst, ah, okay. For more than five years in company X and company X. <laughs> I have some background in data analysis, having studied information systems at blah, 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 university. Uh, through my career, I've done some pretty impressive stuff. If I do say, if I do say so myself, <laughs> I don't understand that well, but Okay, it's like a joke. Okay. For example, at Company X, I like that project for migrating all operations data to a new data warehousing system to cut down on cost. The new solution was a smash benefit, better fit for our business, which eventually led to saving of uh, up to $2,000 annually. $200,000. $200,000 annually. My God, Very good. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> what did you get from this? And that could be a, a, an example. So showing or bringing up uh, goals that you made, important things you made. Uh, not only uh, making the emphasis uh, like in uh, strengths or things related to personality, these are like goals or uh, things to make uh, helping the other company you've been working. I understand it that way, not only related your cap capability, it would be okay to use yeah. capability, that yeah. your capabilities uh, that you are just flowering yourself uh, is tying your capabilities with this and this project and the result. Okay, so that is true. I mean, if you see the structure, it's like, yes, my name is this. I have experience in this. I went to this university and my major is in this. But then you go and provide examples, right? Mm -hmm. I, you tie I, to, to some, something you did. They, uh, people that are interviewing, they love that one. So for really? you to provide- First time I heard that, you know, because sometimes whenever they ask that famous question is like just expressing things about my myself <laughs> and this and this and that and and you don't think that you need to relate your capabilities to projects you made or they really love that one i mean i've been in many interviews and that is something that they really really love i mean mm -hmm. to okay. say i'm this this and this and i'm capable of doing this in a in a short way of mm -hmm. course mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because exactly. maybe they are, they are going to ask you actually, what is your major? What do you do in this project or anything like that in mm -hmm. the future? But it's a good introduction so they know that you are able, that you led, that you did, that you achieved something. So that is mm -hmm. good. You're capable, capable to lead something, a project. Exactly. Mm, okay. Good. Perfect. And then the second one is for Fernando. Hey, teacher, simple answer too. Yep. Okay. I am Jane Doe, a recent college graduate from the University of Wisconsin Madison. I have just graduated with honors in biochemistry. 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 Okay, biochemistry. I know my way around a lot and have had multiple opportunities to put my knowledge into practice as a chemistry research assistant. 
Uh, the lab felt like home, which is why I love to work as a lab assistant. I am passionate, hardworking, and extremely re responsible. I am also looking forward to put into practice all the things I learned during my time at university. Wow, what lovely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I will use in my next interview. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh -huh. yeah, that, that is the thing that you can learn and, and take in consideration just in mm -hmm. case you have the chance to go to an English interview. And yes. uh, well, I, I, what I love about this one is that this is like uh, for a person that does not have a lot of experience. But yes. even though you don't have experience, you can provide a very good answer, right? So but Fernando, shall... yes. What did you get from this? Yeah, like like you say, it's a person that without experience, but she showed that passionate for for this profession, and the, she sorry her her desire to to learn and put in practice all the knowledge that her had. And I don't know, maybe like. Um, Anna Claudia said, uh, this question is about love yourself, yourself, like um, you cannot talk about, or maybe yes, but it's not, it's not a recommendation. Uh, talk about, I have two children, I live in the next year, you know, it's, it's more related to your experience and your, your experience in your career. And that is a good example. Yeah, so the good thing is that we have two totally different examples, right? So the first one is like, yes, I have experience in this, this, and this. And the other one, I don't have experience, but I'm passionate. I really want to work here and uh, I feel like home whenever I'm in this kind of area. I, I feel like I belong here, right? So that is a good thing. Good, before we move on to the next one, we're going to uh, check the attendance, of course. And I remember that uh, somebody say blah, blah, blah. Do you know how is that in English? <laughs> I say blah, 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 but I don't know. Oh, okay, but that, that is Spanish, right? You can say that in Spanish, but in English, what they say is jara, jara. So you oh, are really? like, you're speaking with somebody and then you're telling, and he told me, you know, jara, jara, jara. I so, saw also written down that. Sorry. Okay. So that oh, is. Oh, that's the meaning of that. Okay, good to know. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Very good. Perfect. So let's check on the attendance. Ada Susana Cáceres. Ana Claudia González Velázquez. Present teaching. Good, Ada. I got you here. Uh, Dani Josué García Martínez. Fernando Marvin González Martínez. Present teaching. Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejía. Present teacher. Good. Heidi Eugenia Salguero de Rivas. Present teacher. Good. Ileana Giselle Cañas Escobar. Present teacher. Good. Irene Susana Cuellar Albanes. Jose Marcos Rodríguez Ayala. Present. Good. Jose Osmin Rivas Navas. Jose Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Juan Miguel Brand Mejía. María Alejandra Barrientos Romero. Present teacher. Good. Ramón Enrique Mata Escobar. Present teacher. Good. Roberto Luis Umaña Orellana. A perfect, Jose I got you. Roxana Ivette Asensio de Mejía. Present. Good. Steven Vladimir Villa Corta Rivera. Suleima Yvonne Moreno de Hernández. Got you, Suleima. Okay, very good. So let's continue with this topic that is it's interesting, you know. Let's see what we learn. Uh, where is it? Here is it. Okay, so. How did you hear about this position is the second question. So let's see, um, Roxanne, could you please help me with this? Okay. I thought at first, sorry, let me see. 
although at first place this might seem like a straightforward straight forward question. You should grab any opportunity you can, sh you can to show your interest in the company. Even if you haven't been continuously refreshing the company's website for jobs listings, make it, make it seems like to have in a professional way, of course, show excitement, ex excitement. excitement and curios curiosity. If someone inside the company told you about the position or recommend that you apply, definitely make sure you make sure to mention that you'll have you'll have a much better chance at getting hired of someone credible can vouch for your skills. So mention his her name and his, her position inside the company and give their res, res, reasoning, reasoning. For, reasoning for inviting or recommending to you apply for the position. Tell the hiring manager that excites your about, you about the job opportunity or what exactly caught your eye. Your eye. Okay, what did you get from this? Well, uh, when we have an interview, uh, it's important to uh, have uh, the space to mention uh, how we have the knowledge about the position. And maybe we can have an um, extra bonus if we have a recommend for another person that working inside the company. And it's important to rec recognize them when we have the interview and give some information about about them or about yeah about them and uh, share a opinion that what uh, is the reason why I can apply for that position. Very good. So that is it. I mean. This is a very good opportunity. Maybe, yes, it, it says there that it might seem like a straightforward question. So straightforward is direct, right? How did you learn? Like this, ah, okay. So, but no, there is a way for you to also show excitement about the position, the company, you know? I, I was checking that on the internet, on your website. I see that you have the opportunity and I really love this company. I know this about this company and I know that I can do a very good fit into the company. I mean, that is, that is something that is a very good, a very good opportunity for you to, to continue, right? Saying, you know, I will be happy to be here with you. So it's, it's very good. And let's check the examples, the two examples. That is going to be for, let's see, uh, Yvonne is not possible for you, right? Okay. Jose Osmin, is it possible for you? Not possible. Okay. Uh, Maria Alejandra? Yes, teacher. Oh, okay. Jose Osmin, go ahead. Okay. Sorry for that. So it's which one? Example answer one. Okay. So I've known about made up technologies for an, a long time. So I'm a bit fan of, uh, of your product. I even own one of your latest phone models. I love the company's passion for creating super intuitive. Intuitive. Beautiful. Sorry? Intuitive intuitive beautiful hardware so and, and i would love to be a part of it so when i saw your job ad so even though i wasn't actively looking for a job at the time i couldn't help but i apply 
Okay, only that one actually. So what did you get from this? Let's see. So that is like a, a big fund. So like for, for that like technology and also uh, that, so when someone likes that, like the technology, like the hardware, like the, the product, right? Uh, so in actually, so that is just an, a passion that it has for the, like for the, the technology. So however, and at the end, so it says that uh, he, he was not looking for the job, right? So just like it, it was interesting. So just to check the product, like a, make a review for the details or for the technologies. Okay, good. So yes, this is a very good answer actually. So it's like, yes, you know, I, I, I've been checking about your website. I love your product or your company or your service. That is very important. And then, I mean, the last part is a very good trick. Uh, I mean, I was, I'm not, look, I'm not looking for a job, but when I saw the opportunity, well, I, I decided to apply. That is a very good trick, actually. So it's a nice thing when you go to a new company, of course, if you are within the same company, of course, it's a different story, but uh, it's, a, it's a nice trick. Okay, so sample answer number two, that is going to be for Maria Alejandra. Okay, teacher. Uh, I hear from Jim Don, my old colleague, colleague, colleague and college friend, that um, company X was looking for a new sales director. He encouraged me to apply, saying that my experience managing a sales team at some software company will be helpful for company X. I hear a lot about company X for Jim and I'm a big fan of the way you do things there. I've always want to work for a company with a flat organization structure. What did you get from this? Mm -hmm. These people say that here all are that good things for her friends that work in the, this moment in this company. And have a good reference for uh, to work or like to work in this because have a good structure, a organizational structure, uh, the company wanting want to work uh, for employees maybe um, uh, is not only in passion for the example one because that the other person say that all the passions that say that I need to work it because I like in this person these are different uh, I don't know, characteristic of them of the company that I like or to uh, give that knowledge for that position. Okay. Perfect. So yes, actually, this is uh, like the one that it was explained there on the introduction, right? So it's like, yeah, you know, I have a friend that works here. He tells me how everything works here. And I really, I'm really interested in being part of the team or whatever. So is also a, a very good thing for you to approach and answer this question. Okay, the next one is actually one of the most common. So why did you decide to apply for this position? And uh, this one is going to be for, let's see. I need money. Oh, well, yeah. There is a meme, right, that it says, you know, I am a huge fan of not dying from hungry, so <laughs> I want to eat. Okay, Marcus, can you please read this? Okay. Why did you decide to apply for this position? For this question, 
the interviewers want to assess how passionate you are for the position and not the answer isn't. Well, I am very passionate about not starving to death. <laughs> or, well, I needed the money and you guys tend to pay a lot. <laughs> what the interviewer is looking for here is to see how passionate you are about the job or the company. After all, job performance is directly linked to job satisfaction. Satisfaction. The happier you are about your passion at the company, the more productive you will be. And here, here's the kicker. Here's the kicker. Your passion will be very evident during the interview. When you are talking to a person that's passionate about something, you can pretty much feel them glow as they talk. And if you are an HR manager who's interviewed hundreds of people, this is a very good sign to hire the candidate. So use this knowledge to your advantage. When asked this question, your answer should include three things. What motivated you to apply for this position specifically? Why this company? Have you heard of them before? Okay, what did you get from this? Oh, okay, um, yeah. The, I understand that sometimes the, the interviewer is um, makes a question makes this question and yeah like the paragraph said and these people uh, uh, is get used to to interview a lot of people so they they can recognize or they know when the people is very interested in the company or in the um, in the, the position so we have to to communicate that that passion with the interviewer so we have to to say um that we look for that position because we are very passionate not only because we we got a job we we need a job we want some money uh, we have to to communicate that idea that we're really interested in interest in in that position and we have to to specifically talk about why we have we look for that position and what we know about the company and if we heard of them before. Okay, very good. So yes, actually, uh, what it says here is very true. This is for them to check how passionate are you about the position. I mean, you have to to show it because they are going to feel it. And of course, provide the right answers, like why this position? Oh, because I have the experience, I enjoy this, I love to work in this kind of situation, and uh, I love your company or whatever. So that would be something that is important for you to, whenever you are answering this question, that is one of the most common, actually. That is something that I have heard a lot of times. So good. So there is just one answer that is going to be for Jose Wilfredo. Um, I guess. It's... Okay, hello, teacher. Okay, good evening. Good evening. Okay. <clears throat> uh, simple answer, one. Yeah, please. I'm very passionate about sustainability and renewable energy. In fact, I minored in environmental science at XYZ University. I always want to put the engineering degree to a good course and the position as a sustainability coordinator at company XYZ. It's just the right thing. I've been following your company for the past few years and I love how you are changing. We are not in uh -huh. the renewable energy landscapes in America. If you don't know, uh, keep in mind so that if you don't know much about the company or the position, that's okay too for the job. However, it's always better 
do to do your homework before going to an interview. Okay, what did you get from this? Oh, in maybe in this part is uh, when you uh, when you apply for an opposition that maybe you don't know uh, what is the role that you will do and then you maybe you get the position and then you don't know how how to develop your job maybe that one okay very good so uh, yes i mean this is like uh providing that you uh, know a little bit more about the company, the position, things like that one. So as you can see here, it's like the passion that you are going to, to show for the position, right? So that is also very good. There is another answer that is going to be for Francisco Eduardo. Is it possible for you, Francisco Eduardo? Not possible, okay. So let's see. Fernando, could you please help me with this one? For me? Yes, please. Sure, teacher. Shall I continue? Uh, no, Fernando. Also okay. answer two. Uh, yeah, please. Okay, I've always wanted to get into marketing having done promotional jobs here and there, I never had an opportunity to do something more serious. I do believe though that I have just the right skill to get a started, copywriting, basic Photoshop, and of course, a lot of creativity. So I doubt that an internship at company X will be an awesome start to my career in marketing. Hey, what did you get from this? Yeah, uh, it's a it's a way to try to try passion in your job and a way to try that the company feels important for you. Okay, so that is it, right? Again, to feel uh, to transmit that you're passionate about the position. Uh, this one is also when a person does not have a lot of experience, right? So it's like. I uh, done this, but I mean, I know that I have the right skills because I know how to do this and this and this. And uh, I thought that to start with this position would be a very good way for me to start a career in your company. That sounds good. Okay. This is another one that is very, very common, right? What are your biggest strengths? So, um, let's see. Giselle, is it possible for you? Yes, it's true. Okay. Okay. What are your biggest strengths? There are two answers you could go for here. What your actual strengths are and what you think the hiring manager or HR representative wants to hear. We will most certainly suggest you go, suggest you go with the first answer. For this question, you will want to narrow your answer down to at most three strengths. Pick one or two skills that will help you or that will help you really, really excel at the job and one or two personal, more or less unrelated skills. Not sure which ones are your top strengths? Check out the table below to learn which one's perfect for your field. Okay, so there is like a chart, but we're going to check into that one after that one. So what did you get from this? That... That you have two, two ways. Be honest or just said what they, like you said, the HR representative wants to hear it. But I think that the best option is to be honest always. And I think that before, uh, before the interview, 
we have to 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 think about ourselves and be honest with ourselves and and identify these strengths and when you already identify this uh, it's more easy when the when the manager or when the person that that is interviewing you ask you this about the strengths okay very good thank you so yes uh, there are two ways definitely what you know what that you are or what you want they want to hear right so and of, of course as you saw says in the article it's better to go with the first one what you what you really strengths are so and it's a good thing that it says that you have three the maximum of strengths two related with the job and maybe one more that is a personal one so that is good and this is a good charge you know so if you are applying for analytical jobs or strengths that you can say is critical thinking analytical thinking problem solving detail oriental or logical of course if you choose two of those you need to express or, or to uh, say something else right not just the name for creative jobs you can uh, say that you're creative uh, that you all have originality, open minds, detail oriented, curiosity. So those are good. For management jobs, leadership, organization, communication skills, persuasion, teamwork, detail oriented. For hands on job, like uh, things that you have to do with your hands, physical jobs, hard working, detail oriented, motivated, multitasking, problem solving punctual and the last one says communication jobs charisma uh, communication skills energetic persuasion witty and social so depending on which is the job that you are applying you can even be ready for answering this question with two or three uh, strengths depending on the job that you are that you are applying for and then it says after picking your strengths back it up with a situation or story that shows how you have each used it to benefit you on the job. After all, words are just that, words. The HR can know whether you, your natural leadership is an actual strength or just means that you were super active in your high school class. As you probably already know, this is one of the most common interview questions out there. So make sure you're prepared for it before facing the HR manager. So yes, as I was telling you, people nowadays they love for you to provide an example. You know, I have these, this, and these strengths. Naturally, whenever I had this job, I used to do this, and we improve the productivity in twenty percent of whatever. So that is very, very good. Okay, sample answer one. That is going to be for Ana Claudia. Okay. A sample answer one. My biggest strain is that I'm good at picking up new skills. I worked a variety of different uh, at odd jobs, uh, things like working as a waiter, housekeeper, cook, and a lot more, as you probably seen on my res resume. For most of the, uh, those jobs, I ended up picking up all the needed skill within one or two weeks with basically no previous experience. So I'm pretty sure while I don't have any experience as a bartender, I have the right certification and I believe I can get good at, at it within a week or two. Good, what did you get from this? That it's important not to say, only no, I cannot do it. Or I don't know how to do it. It's important to show that you have the 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 willingness and the skills to learn faster in one or two weeks. So, which is uh, considered like if you are in a training time, stuff like that. They, I, I, I guess in this type of question is showing your willingness to learn and to do your best very good perfect so that is it i mean uh regarding skills or strengths you can express and you can adapt that to the uh, to the 
the position that you are applying mm -hmm. to. So for example, in this one, uh, he has experience as other jobs, uh, waiter, housekeeper, cook, but he doesn't have an experience about tender. Mm -hmm. But he expresses that he has some uh, skills that, I mean, he was a very good waiter, but at some point when he started the previous job, he didn't know anything. And then in one or two weeks, and that is a strength, he will mm -hmm. be able to do the job very good. So mm -hmm. that is a good thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, the second example that is going to be for, uh, let's see. Second, there are some people that cannot. Heidi. Okay, possible answer two. My biggest strength is that I'm very efficient at working under pressure. No matter the crisis or stress, I can make the right decision on the spot. As an event manager at Company X, we were organizing an IT conference for a client. There were a ton of last minute hiccups. Some speaker, speakers canceled and the catering company said that they be late for lunch for the lunch break. break. On the top of that, of that, we were understaffed because two of our volunteers organizers got sick and couldn't show up. At that point, things looked so bleak that we were considering canceling the event or postponing it. Instead, I took the initiative in my hands and sorted through the problems one by one. Okay, what do you get here? That it is important to, to show examples of, of, of our, our ability or capacity to solve uh, uh, problems that are more complex. Yeah, actually, that is true. And as you see here, yeah, the person says only one strength. My biggest strength is that I'm very efficient at working under pressure. So, and that he uh, can make decisions on the spot. And then he provided an example. That is a very good idea. Whenever you can do it in a, any interview, that is going to help you. I, I'm telling you. Good. The next one says, what is your biggest weakness? Oh, that's the one that we were discussing, right? So this is a little bit long, but it's good to analyze. Uh, Maria Alejandra. Okay, sorry. Um, uh, this is always a tricky, uh, tricky one. Tricky one, huh? Uh, after all, you don't want to mention your flags during an interview. So it's a warranty to be a tall question. The tricks to answering this one is real, realizing, that realizing. The, realizing that the interviewers don't expect you to be perfect. Everyone has flaws, weaknesses, and things to improve on. When asking this question, the HR manager is actually seeking to learn um, whether, whether you have the right skill for the job if you're, if you're applying for the position of a server in a busy restaurant and you say your biggest weakness is performing under pressure then you're defined definitely 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 not getting a callback if you're sell a work and really know that your sticking points are and no fake humble brand weaknesses don't come uh weaknesses <laughs> you can just say that your biggest weakness weakness is that you work too hard or that you are a perfectionist. The key here is to mention a weakness that real, but not something that will get in the way of you doing your job. You wouldn't want to say you are bad at math if you apply for a accountant position with job. 
would you? It is also good practice to mention how you are working towards overcoming this weakness and realizing how it affects or your negative your negatively if you can just balance in it with a positive side effect trick is like two sides of the same coin yeah what did you get from this <laughs> um the the weakness depends that the point of view that you see or the position you apply because uh, for the example say that you uh, apply a restaurant and the, uh, when you have a uh, bring a service for a client a restaurant is very popular or busy and you are stressful very or easier uh, maybe don't call back for that need a person that have more or resist for a stress or a situation that you have demand them demand attention uh, for every clients and or you say only weakness no rela relation with uh, the position but uh, if you improve in this um, uh, only that. Perfect, thank you. So actually, yes, uh, as we discussed before, this is a difficult one, right? But you need to be ready. And I mean, if you know that this is something that might be in the interview, you need to say something. Maybe you have to be ready with two or three weaknesses, but one, I guess, is good enough. One that is, uh, is not going to be in the middle of getting the job, but something that might be real on you. And as I was telling you at the end, it says that you need to mention how you are working so this weakness disappears. So you are working on that one so you improve. And that is also a very good thing. And there are possible answers. Let's see. Um, Marcus, could you please read the first one? Okay, okay. A sample answer one. Uh, my biggest weakness has always been communication skill. I've been pretty shy and anxious as a kid. Over the year, however, I've been really working on these issues. At this stage, I'm much better than I ever been, but I'm still far from perfect. This, however, won't have any impact on my job as a farmer. Despite lacking communication skill, I'm very good at working in team. Good. What do you get from this? Okay, uh, uh, I I could do this, I could make this work um, to me because uh, describe um, at some point my profile because um, yeah, I know I'm very, sometimes very shy and anxious and the, despite all this um, soft skills, this lacking of soft skills, I am very good at working uh, in, in a team. But what I understand from this is that also we speak about our weakness. We have to, to mention that and um, we are working on improving that, that gaps that um, lacking and, and it does, doesn't have have to doesn't uh, have an impact, a good, a uh, great impact in our performance and every in our job every day. So we have to mention our skill, but we have to to mention also that we are working on on solving that issues and constantly we are improving that. For example, a few years we are we are very lacking of that that skill but now we are better than that year okay very good yes actually this is uh, something very interesting i mean if you see this weakness i mean communication skill of course it's not going to affect because the job is a programmer so and he's working you uh, that is very important that you have to say that you are working on that one i'm doing this and this and this so 
I, uh, I am better every day. Uh, of course, imagine that you are applying for, I don't know, for uh, working on the radio on a program, for example, uh, you cannot say that you have problems with communication, right? That, I mean, it's not going to be good. So that depends on the, on the job. So you need to think about this every time that you are going to apply for a position. So you are ready for this. Good sample answer number two is for Roxanne. Okay, well, as a recent graduate, I said my biggest weaknesses is the lack of real life work experience. While I worked on a sound for software project in the university, I don't have the experience of working in a fully agile environment, environment with an experience experienced team. I am, however, I am, however, willing to do my best and catch up, up as fast as I can. Okay, what did you get from this? Well, uh, I think that uh, the most of the people uh, start like that person because uh, when you start in a new job you don't have the whole experience and you need to improve each day and each process and you try to get as soon as possible and try to uh, be a um, like a um, como un, un eslabón o alguna persona clave, a key, key person in the, your, maybe in your uh, team, because uh, you need to uh, get uh, a lot of knowledge and maybe uh, you don't have the, the enough experience, but if you know, if you know a little of each process, you can build a uh, strong knowledge about your process or, or department in general or your team. Okay, very good. So you see how this is very interesting. I mean, the person that, I mean, if you don't have experience on that job, that is the weakness. I mean, you don't have to go further and it's going to be very easy. And if you say I'm willing to do my best, I'm very fast learning and I'm going to uh, study in my free time so I can learn what it's needed, definitely uh, it's going to be a very good thing. I mean, this is like an advantage here. The very thing good. is that when you start in a new company, maybe uh, you have a few knowledge about uh, some process or some uh, task, but when you start, everything is totally different because you change the industry, for example, and the process is not the same as the, as the uh, previous. Okay. Yeah, definitely that happens. I mean, if you are moving to a different industry or anything like that, it's going to, it's going to, be something that you need to in consideration whenever you are in an interview. So you can express that one. And this is the mm -hmm. right moment for you to say that one, right? Yes. Good. Okay, so the next one says, what do you know about this company or organization? So this one is going to be for Jose Wilfredo. Is it possible for you? Maybe not, right? Okay, uh, Fernando. Okay, teacher. What do you know about this company organization? Uh, a quick search in the about page of the company organization you are applying for should be enough, right? Well, yes and no. Think of this as an open-ended question. There is no real wrong answer here other than uh, incorrect example. I don't know anything about this organization. In fact, 
how did I end up here? Can you guys call me a cut free of wit? However, the more you actually know about the company, the better your chances of getting hired. Imagine two equally competent candidates. One, one who doesn't particularly care much about your company and is only applying because they know you pay good salaries. Two, another who's been following your company blog for age, loves your product, and has several friends already working in the company. Which one would you pick? Exactly the second one. So with this job interview question, you want to convince the recruiter that you are the candidate number two. Now, how do you do that? Well, a rule of thumb here is to do some Googling before the interview and learn the following about the company. What does the product or service do? What impact does the product service have? What's the company culture like? What are the latest news about the company? How are they performing? And pretty much whatever over time of info you can dig up. Perfect, what do you get from this? Uh, what does it mean, dig up, teacher? Uh, where is that one? Uh, uh, dig up is like when you research more in deep. Ah, okay, okay. Uh, well, when you when you have an interview in a company that you don't know, you can search that company and not only on Google. Today's social media is very important, and all company has a page or Twitter, Twitter account or Instagram. So you can search and learn about uh, the information of the company. It's if it's often that company has a section in their web page about them. And you can learn about their foundation, their members, their knowledge, their achievement. So you when when the interviews happen, when the interview sorry, when the interview happen, you are preparing for for talk about the company with the company. <laughs> Okay, that is a good one, yeah. So you need to be ready. I mean, you need to know what they do. I mean, of course, or the department, if you are in the same company, what they do, what is the relation with the whole process. So that is something very important, actually. Good, possible answers. The first one is going to be for Francisco Eduardo. Not possible. Uh, Raymond, is it possible for you? Not possible. Jose Wilfredo. Okay, the tree. Okay, sample number one. Okay, so sample answer one. I had heard about you until recently. Actually, I found out about Company X through your job on random job board. After doing some brief research on you guys, I ended you up falling in love with your software and your mission. Now, I've worked with a ton of different projects management software, example software, software one, example software two, but none of them were as intuitive and as example software three. Okay, what do you get from this? Oh, this is uh, maybe one um, review that someone uh, tests some software uh, for uh, to use at the company and said that is interesting in the software that he that he or, he or she tried and also he tests a lot of software but maybe he discovered or she discovered a good uh, feature uh, on that one okay very good perfect so 
Yes, actually, it's like telling about the projects that the company has, of course, is going to be a very good thing, right? Okay, the sample number two, uh, let's see. Um, Yvonne, is it possible for you? Okay, uh, Heidi. Okay, uh, sample answer two, right? Yeah, please. Well, I know that you're one of the biggest investment banks in town, state or country. Company X pop up, pops up on news pretty often. I've read that you've invested in some of the hottest tech iPods and have several upcoming biotech companies in your portfolio. I got a particularly interested by your recent investment in Startup X. I found it interesting because of why reason. Okay, what did you get from this? I think uh, when you go to an interview, uh, you have to make an investigation about the company you are trying to, to, to get into, right? You have to do a kind of research. Definitely. So you need to research, you need to know what the company does, what are some uh, environment or what is to work there and uh, the products or services, things like that are important. Exactly. Good. Number seven, I guess we're not going to finish tonight, but anyways, we can continue on Monday. Uh, why should we hire you? That is also very common. So let's see. Um, Giselle. Not possible for you, Giselle. Okay. Let's I'm here, teacher. Sorry, I'm here. Oh, okay, perfect. So number seven. Yeah. Please. Okay. Why should we hire you? Hire you. Yeah. Oh, the ultimate humble brag question. Now, the real question is, how do you sell yourself without trying to look arrogant, desperate, or needy? A good rule of thumb here is to stay away from these extremes. Think you're a good fit, that you are, that you're a good fit for the job? Say that you have the right, the right experience, sorry. Whatever you do, don't oversell yourself. I'm the best salesman you've ever met. Instead, make a general statement. I'm a great fit for the position because, and talk about your experiences and achievements. Here are three general points you can mention. Number one, how you're super passionate about working for the company, and why? Number two, how your skills fit the requirements. And number three, how you're going to help the company solve their system problems. Improve, okay, the milk, <laughs> the cookie. Uh, improve a metric, set up a process, etc. Okay, what do you get from this? That we don't have to lie. Okay, we just have to be ourselves and be honest all the time because uh, there are consequences when you when you lie about your skills or or your profile for example nowadays uh, it's very common that in the interviews ask, asking you that you know what's your level in excel or in in the office package and you know oh i'm very good i know about all about excel powerpoint and blah blah, blah. and then may, maybe you have to do, a, I don't know, like a, something advanced in Excel and oh my God, I lied before. So a, we try to, to like the part of self, don't oversell ourselves, just be you. And if you're fit, you're fit for the position, well, congrats. But Always tell the truth. Mm -hmm. Okay, very good, perfect. So that is it, right? So you will be able to provide, this is, I guess, link 
with the one about uh, why would you like to apply for this position? Why did you apply for this position? So it's kind of passionate, right? It's like, you know, I have the experience, I have achieved this, I can fit in your needs and your and the values of the company. So if you do something like that and you keep uh, honest on what you are and what you want to achieve, everything is going to go very well. So sample answer number one, that is going to be for, uh, I guess it's right, this is possible. Ana Claudia. Okay, sample answer one. Well, as a start, I have all the skills and work experience required for the job. I worked as a sales manager for more than five years and over the past two, I closed several deals uh, totaling in six figures. Oh. Uh, oh, and uh, on top of that, I have experience working with tech companies, so I'll be able to pick up all the product specifics much faster than the other candidate. Oh. <laughs> what do you get from this? My God, <laughs> it's like, uh, is uh, it now I think this candidate is flowering himself and he's <laughs> Yeah, I mean, he's speaking about the experience and uh, what you need. Uh -huh. So that, that is good, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but also he's uh, uh, talking about the skills that he has. Uh, it's good to show up like, uh, show, show up, yes, show up. That would be show up like uh, the good one I am, the best than the other candidate, right? That is correct. Very good. Okay, good. Thank you. And the number two is going to be for Maria Alejandra. Okay. Um, I have just the right skills. Set to Excel has a exclusive assistant. Uh, while I haven't previously worked as a personal assistant, I pretty much fit the bill for the role. I'm extremely organized, having managed several client, project teams in my university. I led the organization of even one and even two. This involved continuous communication with a plus 12 or 12 plus company. More than 12. Uh, more than 12 companies. Three speakers and more than 50 sponsors. I every meticulous and organized, and I'm more the I'm more than capable. Capable. Capable of helping the CEO get the most of their free time. Good. What do you get from this? <laughs> <laughs> Um, maybe in this example, uh, this person don't have a previous experience for that personal seat, only for the other position and try to emphasize for that a good point for that position, for that organize, that manage or for a project, a uh, different lead or uh, um, behind the other players and try to say what the companies to give a uh, different service or that maybe marketing because that company speaker sponsors and that uh, communications. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. So that is it, right? So you try your best so you can convince the people that you are the right candidate for the position. Well, okay. uh, we, uh huh? Uh, I have a question about the, the, the example. Okay. Can you, okay. Is answer one, what does it mean uh, in six figures? Or it's an example. 
Ah, uh, well, let me just read. It says, I have a discussion what experience required for the job. I work as a sales manager. Ah, okay, six figures in this case is related for a lot of money. Six figures is a number of six. Uh, a million. Uh -huh, so it's, it's a lot of money. So he was a very good salesperson. Uh, uh, interesting. I don't know. <laughs> okay, very good. Perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so uh, we're going to stop here and we're going to continue on Monday. And on Monday, we're going to try, if we have the time, to do some interviews, some fake interviews, so we can practice these things. So it's going to be interesting. By now, we're going to check the attendance. So Ada, Susana, Cáceres, Mendoza. Ana Claudia González, good. Uh, Ana Claudia González Velázquez. Present teacher. Good. Dani Josué García Martínez. Fernando Marvin González Martínez. Present. Good. Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejía. Present. Good. Heidi Eugenia Salguero de Rivas. Present. Good. Ileana Giselle Cañas Escobar. Present. Good. Irene Azucena Cuellar Álvarez. Jose Marcos Rodríguez Ayala. Present. Good. Jose Osmin Rivas Navas. Present. Good. Jose Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Present. Good. Juan Miguel Brand Mejía. María Alejandra Barrientos Romero. Present. Good. Ramón Enrique Mata Escobar. Present. Good. Roberto Luis Umaña Orellana. Okay, uh, for Ramon, for you is the 101 today. I was just going to say. Roxana Ivette Asensio de Mejia. Present. Good. Steven Vladimir Villa Corta Rivera. Suleima Ivonne Moreno de Hernandez. Okay, thank you everybody for being with me tonight. I hope you have a very good night. Rest very well and also have a wonderful weekend. See you on Monday. That is only three more classes and we finish. So let's finish on that one and uh, dream in English. See you around. Thank you. Bye bye, everybody. Good night. Good night. Thank you, teacher. Yeah. Bye, bye, everybody. See you on Monday. See you on Monday. Hello, Ramon. Hello, teacher. Good night. How are you? Good night. Good evening. Uh, I'm fine. <laughs> Actually, nice. I uh, just uh, finished my dinner. Sweet my dinner. Okay, that's very good. So you're ready to 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 rest and. Uh, well, of course, you have experience about the one on one. So the first question I have for you is, how do you feel that you are moving on? Do you feel that you are learning English, that you are learning some words or vocabulary or some things? Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, really, I really like the, this class because you are a teacher to be, um, to make to make to us uh, practice more and and breathe and, and speak. Very okay, good. That's very nice to hear. And do you have any question about any topic from this or any other module that we have checked? Um, you refer to the activities in the in, in the page in the no. Uh, it could be in the platform, it could be in the book, it could be grammar, it could be vocabulary, anything that you may want to ask. Uh, actually, no, I didn't. I didn't. Um, but I don't uh, make the activities in the platform because I really, really have a lot of work and because I have to to um, 
estar pendiente, ¿cómo sería? Sorry. Estar pendiente. Uh, yeah, be pending on something. Okay, okay, and, yeah, and I have to be pending about uh, sales, sales uh, about um, smartphone in promotion because in Santa Ana, Santa Ana, uh, are, uh, um, Santa Ana have a prices, then low prices. Okay. On, until two, let me see, 24 July. Okay. And you, you are living in Santa Ana, right? Yeah, I live in Santa Ana, yeah. And you, um, can you see, or could you see uh, the event in, in the Metro Centro? Uh huh, yes. Uh -huh, okay. In that event, or event, Event, right? Event, uh -huh. Event, in that event, I have to supervise the each, each um, seller. Mm, okay, I see. And which product do you sell? Uh, a smartphone in, in services like uh, um, internet in, in home, home TV. Okay, very good. Yeah, that, that is kind of interesting, very good. I was actually checking about the platform and you are the only one who hasn't done any exercise. And uh, I know that you're busy with your job, but you need to finish on Tuesday, all the platform. Finally, when the promotion finished, I have to pend then about uh, finish of the month. Yeah, please, because and, uh, it's very important. So you have Monday, Tuesday for you to finish everything, everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I know. Okay, so give it a try. And if you have questions, of course, I will be there for you to help. Okay, teacher, thank you. It's a pleasure. Okay, Ramon, was a pleasure to be with you. Have a very good night and see you on Monday. Okay, teacher, see you. Good night. Okay. Good night.